Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about print on demand everything. So if that is something that you're interested in, please do stick around. Hey, so I hope you guys are having a great start to your quarter one. I hope your holidays all went well and you're back in it. Um, I did want to make a little bit of a disclaimer announcement. I've gotten some comments uh, from different people about some of the videos. And so I wanted to say these videos are to give you ideas and to teach you, you know, tips and tricks and how to accomplish different things. So learning skills that you can use to create your own designs. I am not in any way endorsing copying any designs. So when I show research on different designs on Etsy or on Amazon, I'm not saying go out and copy them. I'm just saying, here's a niche that's popular that you can look into or here's a design style that's popular that you can look into or here's how you would go about creating a similar design and you know these are the tips and tricks and tools that you would use to be able to accomplish that so that is my little disclaimer here i do have videos coming up on how to create designs and then again on how to alter already made graphics and whatnot so just keep that in mind and I hope you guys are staying nice and creative and coming up with a lot of unique and original stuff. So in today's video, and I do apologize in advance, it will be a long one. I'm gonna show you how you can create your own customized mugs that you could sell on shops like Etsy. So this is uh, an example of the mug that I'm gonna actually show you guys, how you can create the mug, how you can get, you know, uh, the design, how you can alter things, how you can put it on the mug, and then how you can make the mock-up. And so you should be able to make this exact design if you wanted to, with this exact mock-up if you wanted to, but I do obviously suggest, you know, making it your own in some way, but I'm gonna show you the technique, and then you can go ahead and start selling some really cool customized mugs on shops like Etsy or whatnot. Okay, so with Valentine's Day coming up, I know there's been a lot of talk about different Valentine's Day niches, designs that you can make, and products that you can sell. Um, with that in mind, I am on Printify right now, and I want to show you how you can create a mug that you can sell on Etsy for Valentine's Day or for really any other day. But I'm gonna start right here. So I'm on Printify, and I just went to the catalog on the left, and then I went to best sellers. So best sellers is great because it'll show you what's already selling, what's already popular. And so at the top, you're gonna see some clothes, t-shirts and sweatshirts mostly. But then as we come down here, we've got some stickers, some blankets, you know, some canvas wraps, and then we have some mugs. So I'm gonna show you how to do a mug today. So there's one mug. I already showed you guys how to do a candle. Here's the mug that I wanna show you today because this one has the colored inside and the colored handle, which I actually think will look really good with the design that I wanna create, which is why I'm choosing this one. It's very similar in price point between the two, this one being a little bit more expensive. But let's just go ahead and say we're gonna create a Valentine's Day mug and let's make it a custom Valentine's Day mug, something that somebody could buy and customize because Etsy is all about customization, especially with gifts. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. And so there is the mug and I'm thinking pink and red will be the colors that I'm gonna to wanna to use for Valentine's Day. So I'm just gonna go down here and I'm gonna hit start designing. If you go to where it says start designing and then you scroll down, it'll give you the dimensions that you need to design for. Oops, so as I, it's giving me trouble here, there we go. As I start to scroll down here, you will see the dimensions down here listed. So the print file size or print area size that they give is 2,475 pixels by 1,155 pixels. So if you can remember that or write it down, you can copy and paste, go back and forth, but that's what we're gonna use to create our, our mug. So if I was to just jump over to Canva's you know, home page right here, and I was to scroll up and hit custom size, let's make our own custom size design, I'm gonna type in the width and the height here, and I have already forgot it, so I can just keep going back and forth, and that makes it kinda easy for me. So I'm gonna go over, and it was 2475, 2475, right, by 1155, and back over here, 1155, and then I can hit create new design. 
perfect. So it pulled up this page for me right here. So this is going to be the size that you would need to create for a mug wrap. Now this is a mug wrap, so it will wrap all the way around the mug. So if you wanted to have a design in the just center of the mug, it would go in the center of the page. But if you wanted to have a design front and back, you would have to have one here on this side and one here on this side to do front and back. So that's what we have to keep in mind. Now you can create your own from scratch. You can edit existing ones. There's all sorts of ways to go about doing mugs and you can do a ton of different mugs. I'm gonna go over to Creative Fabrica because they have a lot of already made mug wraps that you can use for print on demand or edit and make them your own. And so I'm gonna show you one that's already made. We're gonna go ahead and edit it, make it our own, and then make it customizable. And so that'll be something that we can sell on Etsy for Valentine's Day or for anything else. Again, I just wanna show you the guys, the technique that you could use, and then you can be as creative as you want with this. So I'm gonna go ahead, jump back over to Create a Fabrica now. And I went ahead and just did a search up here for Valentine's Day mug wrap. So Valentine's Day mug wrap, and it has a ton of mug wraps that are already made. And some of them are pretty simple. Some of them are really cool. Some are simple designs that you could put on anything. Others are like full wraparound artwork. And so the one that I wanted to show you guys was actually this one right here. I really liked the colors on this and the, the design texture. And it says love and it's got, you know, a little um, gnome guy. I don't particularly like the little gnome guy, but I do like the colors of the mug. And so I'm gonna go ahead and use this. So if I was to click on this, it'll open up. I can download it and it says, commercial and full POD usage allowed. So yes, you can use this for print on demand without making any alterations really, but I would always strongly suggest making alterations to everything. Um, but this is what we're gonna be doing. So you can go ahead, hit download, it will download it. And then what you can do is jump back over to Canva and what we're gonna do is upload it and then we can use it. So I'm gonna go ahead now, jump right back over to my Canva page, what I had here, and I can go over to my uploads and upload that design. And so right here, I've got it uploaded. I can click on it. I can close this and there is my design. And I can pull it edge to edge. So I'm gonna have it something like that. I'm gonna need to center it. And there we go. So it would be something along the lines of that. Now, the way this is, the design is in the middle, so that would be right in the middle of the mug. I really want it to be on the sides. So I want, you know, one on each side, and I want to, like, kind of recreate this whole centerpiece. What I'm thinking is getting rid of the gnome, because I'm not super fond of the gnome, and making this an area for a picture, making it an area for a circular or oval picture. That way we can go ahead and make this customizable. So how do I do that, <laughs> right? There's a few different ways that you can do it. I'm gonna show you one technique that I use. So one of the things I'm gonna do is just duplicate it. So it's really easy to go ahead and just duplicate this. And so now I've got another page to work with. I'm gonna take this, and now I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control D. That's gonna give me a whole nother copy. And now that I have a whole nother copy, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to cut out the gnome and then I'm going to take this, and it would, if I bring it over here, whoop, kind of fit over like that. And so you can see the way that would fit over, and it'll fit over here like that. And so we're kind of trying to line these things up, and I can use different parts of this to line it up. So for example, I'm gonna go ahead, oops, yeah, move it all the way over here. It's gonna be a little bit easier. I'm gonna hit Control D again. Now I've got my duplicate there. I wanna get as much as I can of the edging. Boom. And take this. And now let's go ahead and try to line it up a little bit. So something like that. There we go. So now I've covered up about half of the gnome picture. And I can do that again now with this other side. So I can hit Control D again. I'm gonna move this all the way over here. I'm going to crop it down to cut off the gnome so as closely as I can. 
And then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna try to overlap again. And so I'm just overlapping layers essentially to cut out that white part. So that white part is gone. We're gonna remake that. And so get your overlaps as close as you can to looking like they're lining up pretty good. And then once you've got that, boom, and it looks pretty cool. So now I've got my, my blank, you know, wrap that I can now work with. So I did like the idea up here. I'm keeping it up here for reference. And so what they did was put a little white splotch and then put the wording over it so that it popped. So I can do that. So let's go ahead and find a nice sort of grunge background. So we can go up to elements. And what I can do is look for, let's go grunge background and see what comes up. And so I'm gonna go to graphics. And so I'm looking for something sort of square, rectangular looking. So there's one, there'll be a few examples as I start to scroll down and you're just looking for the best one. That's pretty solid. It doesn't have as much of a splotchy edge to it. And that one's kind of cool. I do sort of like the way that that grunges out. I kind of like the way that this one grunges out. So that one or that one could be good choices. And so you can scroll down, see what all your choices are. Try to find whichever one you think is gonna work best. I could do more of a circular style design. There's another rectangular one and you can just sort of start playing with it. So let's go back up and pick one of these more squarish looking ones that I saw earlier. Boom, so I'm gonna go with this one or this one. I kinda like the splatter of this one, but then I like the grunge of this one because it looks close to that. So let's just see, I'm gonna take that one. Let's go ahead and make it white. And there is my grunge square. And what I would want to do, because I'd want two grunge surfaces, would be to have one on one side and one on the other. So I can look there and say, how do I like that? That looks pretty cool and it actually looks pretty close to the one that they used there. Matter of fact, it might, it's not the exact same, but it's pretty close to the one that they used there. So let's just say we're going to go with this one. Now, I could put it over here and then I'd have to design back and forth. The easier way would be to design one and group it all together and then duplicate it and then put it on the other side. That way it's identical. So that's what I would go ahead and do. And because we might wanna resize it, it might be better off just to put this on another page first. So let's say I'm going to add a page. I'm going to bring this down. So this is what I'm gonna be working on. And I'm gonna change the background color on the second page just so I can see. So this is what I'm going to be working on. And what I wanna do is recreate this sort of love thing, but do it a little bit different. So as always, you pick your fonts, you pick your colors, all of that stuff. So let's go ahead. I'm just gonna pull up a text box by hitting T. We're gonna start with a capital L. Easy enough. I'm gonna skip the O for now because I'm gonna go ahead and make that a frame. And I'm gonna hit the text box again. And this time I'm gonna go with capital, well, I just said O, but let's go with capital V, love. And then one more text box. I'm gonna make this capital E. And then the E is gonna go here. And my frame is gonna go here-ish. And so if you want the full look of what it's kinda gonna look like, we can add that frame in now. So let's say I wanted to go to frames. Now if you hit frames, you want this kind of frame, not, you know, graphics. So if you can go back to all and hit frames, then we can go to the frame section, not the graphics section. And the frame section will allow you to drop photos into any of this. So there's all different sorts of frames that you can use in different you know, shapes. And I've done videos on this before. I could use a heart, I could use a circle. I'm gonna go more with an oval because I do want it to kind of look more like an O. So you can scroll down here until you find an oval you like. I do like this one right here and it does have a little bit of a border on it, which will work nice. So that is going to be my O. And I'm just gonna put that in here as sort of a space saver. That way you can see, I can change the border color again to a pink so that way we can see it pretty good and I can change that again later. But so that is the basic format of my love. So let's go ahead and pick some fonts. Now I did look through the fonts for a while um, and sometimes that can take the longest, but the fonts that I went with, I wanted to be similar-ish in style. So, you know, a little bit more fun, I guess, something that popped, something that, 
you know, was pretty bold like that, but again, it's a different font really entirely. So I'm gonna go down here and with the L, I went ahead and went with a font called Intro Rust Baseline. And so I can type that in here, Intro Rust Baseline. And so you can search for bold fonts, you can search for like kid fonts, you can search for handwriting, you could search for grunge, um, you could search, you know, any kind of term you want, it'll give you some things to look through. If you go through the display fonts as well, there are some good fonts. So those are just different ways that you can go about, you know, searching. So right here I have Intro Rust Baseline. So let's see. Oh, that's close, but that's not quite the one I wanted with the shadow. That was it. I liked the one with the shadow. So there's that one. And I decided to do the E the same. Now here's where I changed it with the V. I did decide to make it a little bit different. So there are some more intro rust. So those are intro rust baseline and baseline with shadow. And then as I come down here, rust base shadow. This is the one I went with intro rust H2 base shade. Uh, whew, mouthful, but there we go. So I liked those. I thought that they were fun. They looked good. You know, I, I like the way that that looked. So I'm gonna have to make them so that they're about the right size for me. And I do want them to be the same size letters so I can go ahead and kind of get the rough idea of sizes and then make sure they're all the same size. So that probably looks pretty close to how I want it. What size is this? So this is a 341. So I can take this now, this is at 315 and I can make that one 341 too. And then this one, pretty close. I'm gonna make that one 341 as well. So now they're all the same size. And now what I can do is I can angle them a little bit, play with which direction that they're working in and play with some of the colors. So if I look up at my original, I do kind of like the way that these were all sort of different colors and the way that they were all sort of angled just a little bit differently. So I can do that. I can go ahead, take the L, maybe angle it out a little bit, take the V, maybe angle it in just a little bit, something like that. The E, what was that? Maybe angled in a little bit. And the O here was maybe angled out just a smidge. And so I've got something like that. I can now move them a little closer together if I want so that they're, you know, real close like that maybe move this one up a little bit right now i'm just using the arrows on my keyboard so if you click on any element and then you use the up down right left arrows you can go ahead and move those pretty small like one you know one pixel at a time up down right left and so that works pretty well you know for making those little micro adjustments so right now i do like the way that that is looking let's go ahead and change some colors so for this l color here i want to do maybe one of the lighter reds and maybe for the E, maybe one of the darkers and maybe here, maybe one of the pinks. And so right now that's, there you go, three different colors there, kind of similar to what they did at the top there. And I can play with these again once I get them where I want them. And so that looks pretty good. Maybe I want a little bit of a wider border on my oval. So here's what I can do. I can go ahead and hit C on my keyboard. That's gonna pull up a circle and I can stretch that circle out to kind of make it look like an oval. So pretty similar to this. Now this one, whoop, what angle do I have that at? Uh, it's about a seven angle there. So I can take this one too and I can also angle it at about a seven and put it you know, over the top and at this point sort of play with how thick I, I want it to be so that it looks like it's pretty close to that one. So I can put it over the top and then what I can do is hit control and then the backspace a couple of times until I get it behind my frame. There we go. So now it is behind the frame and I can, you know, move it like that so that it sort of makes a frame around that. And so that's pretty big. I can go ahead and make it a little bit smaller. So at this point I can sort of again play with it so maybe i don't want it to be that big and then i can play with the placement a little bit too again just by using my arrows on my keyboard and that's going to make it so that i can make really small adjustments up down right left until i feel like i've got it centered 
pretty nicely there. And then I can take that and I can match it to the same color that I have here. So now those are matched pretty nicely. And so that looks kind of cool the way that is. I can make sure that I've got my letters at the very top so that if there's any overlap, they're going over the top there. So, so far, so good. In fact, maybe, maybe I wanna group these and make it just a little bit smaller. Now, if you wanna group something, you can click outside and pull over, but it's gonna pull over everything there. So if I want to, I can temporarily move that out of the way just enough so that I can group just that and then I can put this back <laughs> somewhere there, wherever I think it looks good. And now I have this grouped and I can shrink it down and move it so that I can get that O sort of however I want like that. So there's something pretty cool there. Now the whole reason I didn't do it up here is because I didn't want to have to group it with all of these. So you do need it to be separate if you want to group it. So now that I have it the way that I like it, at this point, I can take this whole thing and group that whole thing together. Perfect. And now I can bring it up on top of my background here. So here's what I got. Now I can find the center piece of this. I can pull a line over. If you don't have your rulers and guides on the top and the bottom, by the way, if you hit Shift R on your keyboard, that's going to pull up your rulers and guides. Then you can just go over to the left click and you can drag a line to the center of the page. It'll turn that sort of pink color. That's how you know you're in the center. That way you have a center line and it's going to help make sure that you get this sort of lined up the way that you want it. Once you sort of have it in the spot that you want, you're going to take this whole thing because it's grouped now. So it's easy to do hit control D. It will duplicate the entire grouping. And then I can just go ahead and put it on the other side. Again, trying to line it up similar to how it is on that side. And it'll let you know when everything is lined up because it gives you little lines when things are lined up right. And so once you have it where you want it, looks good. Boom, there is my mug template. So now the way I would do this, if somebody was, let's say, doing a custom, I was selling it as a custom design, they could, send me their photo so I could list it as custom and with instructions to send me the photo that they want in the little box, right? And so they send you the photo, whatever they send you, you upload it here on the left-hand side and then you take that photo and you can just drop it right into the frame and then you download this whole thing, you go over to Printify and you create your you know, custom product from there. And then you can just substitute that in for their order. And so it's pretty easy to do once you've done it a few times, you'll get the hang of it. Now, I don't wanna list it like this with this little frame here, cause I think that looks stupid. So I do wanna put some sort of a mock picture in there for now, just as a placeholder so that people know that they can put pictures in there. So let's go ahead and just find a picture. So I'm gonna go up to elements and from here, I'm gonna clear that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put like happy couple. And I'm gonna go to photos. And here are lots of photos of happy couples. And I'm gonna find one that looks like it would go well inside that little oval. And so pretend that these were photos that a, you know, a customer had actually just sent you and they wanted it in here. Now it might be a couple photo. It might just be a, couple, a picture of like a girlfriend or a boyfriend or something like that. Um, you know, it could be anything, but let's say they send you the photo and they want you to put it right in there. Now, because this is my mock-up, I want it to be a, you know, a good looking photo. Um, so I'm looking for something that's gonna fit the space well and, and really, you know, put this in the best possible light. So obviously everybody's gonna have a different photo and so it's not always gonna look the same, but I mean, you could see like, here's a photo and it's kind of vertically oriented, looks nice. I can kind of, hold it over the frame and it'll go right in the frame. So just like that. Now what I can do here, by the way, as well, I'm gonna have to ungroup it at this point so that I can get to everything individually. I can double click on it. It'll pull up the whole picture. Once I've got that whole picture up at this point, if I wanted to go ahead 
and move it, crop it, whatever I needed to do to make it look like it looks nice in the frame. Boom, so now I could do that and that looks pretty good. Now I could give them the option to put in a different picture on each side, by the way. So I could have one picture on the front of the mug, one picture on the back, or we could just do the same picture for front and back. And so you can decide what options you want to give with that. If you wanna give the option for a different picture, then go ahead and show a different picture. If you wanna give the option just for the same picture, then I would just take this and put it there. And I could pretty much just, you know, take it, control D, duplicate it, and literally line it up right over the top there. That way it's identical. And so now I've got what would be my sort of um, uh, template. And so anytime I get an order, I would just come back to this template and essentially change the photo. If you wanted to you know, make a template for each customer, for example, at this point, all you would have to do is come up to the top and you get what that little plus is and you can duplicate the page. So now I've got two versions. So I can you know, have one version here with one person, one version here with another person and that's how you can just keep making more and more copies. Um, I have my original design up here which I was just sort of using for reference. But now you can see how I took this original design that had the little gnome right in the middle and I made it a custom mug that now has you know, uh, a design front and back and I made it so that it could be custom. Now this technique can be used for all sorts of things. So I'm showing you this for Valentine's Day, but again, you could do this for any holiday or anything that you wanted. It's the same, you know, principles that I kind of wanted to show you. So let's go ahead and title this now, Custom Mug Wrap. Okay, and we're just gonna download this page too. So let's go ahead, we'll go up to share. I'm gonna hit download. I don't need a transparent background because I want the whole thing. So all I'm gonna do is select my page. So you just go ahead and select page two. That's the page that you're on, hit done, and you're going to hit download. It's a PNG and once it's downloaded, then we can jump right over to uh, Printify and I'll show you how we can go ahead and put that on the mug. So. Jumping over to Printify here, I'm still on my area where I had that mug. And now I'm gonna go up and go to my device because we're gonna add a photo. So if I put add design from my device, it'll pull up your downloads and then all you do is select that custom mug wrap that you just made. And there you go. So now we've got that custom mug wrap. It looks really nice. Oops, I'm gonna bring this down so I can actually see it a little better. There it is, so it looks really nice. Everything looks pretty centered. I can kind of move it around a little bit if I need to. Right now, the color selected is that red interior. I can also come up here and select more colors that I want. So if I wanted to offer it with a black interior, or if I wanted to offer it with the pink, I could do that as well. Um, so it's up to you to kind of decide. Um, and then I can go up to preview and kind of show you guys right here what the preview would look like. So the front view, um, obviously you're just gonna see, uh, you know, kind of the gap in between the two designs. Um, I don't like this mock-up, most people aren't gonna like this mock-up, but this is the mock-up that you would see if you had done that um, single element one with the gnome, the gnome would be right here in the center. But what we have is a front and back design. So you would be looking more at like, the right or left side of the mug, which I like better because it's gonna show off the handle. So that original design didn't show off the handle as well. So this is gonna give you both the handle and there's your front design. Um, I don't know that it looks as good on the pink. It kind of matches that pink there. There's a lot of different shades of pink. So I wanted to make sure it kind of matched. I think it's gonna look the best on the red. Let's see, so the red is probably the one that I would use as my main mock-up image. And then of course they can choose whatever color they want. So yeah, I think the red looks pretty good. And so now I can see it's got the red interior, it's got the red handle, and it's got you know the look on the front and the back. And so this is what the left side, if I was to switch and do the right side, it should look pretty much the same. And then they've got their context ones. And there's your context view. And I like the angle on the context view too, by the way, because it does a better job of not showing that big white gap because this does not print all the way around. So it will have a little bit of white, but I do like the angle of the context view. Usually I like context for my mock-ups 
this isn't the best one. I'm not super fond of this because I want it to be Valentine's y. So, what I would do is probably go ahead and make my own mock up. Um, and so, I know this video is already running a little bit long. You've seen how to make the mug, but if you want to see how I'm going to go ahead and do the mock up, then just go ahead and keep watching. Um, I'm going to go ahead and download this. So, I can click, um, right click on the image, and I can go ahead and save image as. It'll be a PNG, and I can say um, just mug mock up lifestyle or however you want to call it and it will save it and so now what i would do is go ahead and go back over to canva so i'm on canvas home page and now what i want to do is make a mock-up so if i'm making a mock-up what i want is usually i'll do it in a square format so i would probably just go ahead and do 4000 by 4000 and hit create a new design for my mock-ups and so here is my square i'm going to go over to uploads and upload that mock-up so there it is i can pull it out and you can see right here now what i would like to do is remove the background keep the mug and put the mug on my own background so i think that's what would look the best now this isn't the greatest quality picture, but that's okay. So what I would do is go to edit photo and I would go ahead and do the background remover and see if I can get that background removed. And actually it did, other than the shadow, it did pretty well. So I can then go ahead, click these three little lines here and now I can use my little brush to just get rid of that shadow. And otherwise it actually did a really good job of isolating the mug. So there we go. So now I have just my mug. And the mug looks a little bit dark and a little bit flat. I can also edit the photo here, go to adjust if I want to. I can bring up the brightness a little bit so that it looks a little bit lighter. I can play with the contrast a little bit too to kind of bump that contrast up. I can go with the saturation and the vibrance to make it look a little bit more vibrant and I can go ahead and go with the sharpness and try to make that a little bit more sharp so I think that looks better so now I've got my mug so now I can put it on any background I want so I can again go up to elements and I can go for like a table background and see what comes up or I could put Valentine's background and see what comes up so here's table background I'm looking for something kind of light so something like one of these top ones would be pretty good so any kind of nice light table lifestyle style backgrounds that you want to use and you can just sort of play with and so you've got lots and lots and lots of options here so I'm gonna keep it simple just show you guys how to do this again I'm just showing you the technique and then it's up to you to kind of play with it and decide how you want to, you know, proceed. So let's just say I go with one of these top ones here. Let's go with this one. I can go ahead, have this fill my page. And I can make it as big as I want. And then I can hit control and backspace. So I've sent it to the back. Now I can put my mug kind of on that table there wherever I want it I could drop a drop shadow if I want and then I could sort of decorate it so I could put like roses or flowers and I could put like a rose on the table like kind of in front of the mug like that so that it looked a little bit Valentine's y so something like that might look good or rose petals or like here's three little roses here so more like a bouquet you, you can be as sort of creative as you like with that maybe i just put like a rose there it looks valentine's -y. or i think a bouquet would actually look better but let's see what i my options are you know anything that you think might look good now the other option by the way because this is nice the other option would be to find an already made mug mock-up and just put your mug over the other mug. And so if I just did mug mock-up, I could see what was available. And so now here we see some nice mug mock-ups where they're holding the mug. Now, 
It's gonna be a little tougher if it's in their hand. I can't use the same handle because this is a nice red handle. So a lifestyle mock-up where it's on a table is gonna work a little bit better than in somebody's hand, but you can see different lifestyle mock-ups here that you could use. And you would just go ahead and put your mug sort of right over the top. We might have to do a little bit of a magic eraser on the mug to kind of get rid of it and put our mug over the top. But you can see how you could use any of these. If you don't like these, we can jump back over, by the way, to Creative Fabrica. And they had some nice Valentine's Day mug. And then I could put mock up. And so here's a ton of Valentine's Day mug mock-ups that you can use and there's all sorts of ones and so you would really only need to pick one here's one where you got the roses in the background here's a little rose here it's simple i can get rid of this mug put my mug in there and it's going to look pretty good and so that's one thing that i can do so when i'm looking for you know a mock-up i am looking for one where i can pretty easily crop out the mug and put my own mug over the top so I don't need it to be too busy. And there's one with a gnome. There's another one with a little flower. I like those little roses. And so you can kind of see some of these fun mock-ups that you could do. Let's go ahead and say that I'm gonna try to use maybe this one here because I can go ahead and crop out the mug and put my mug in pretty quickly. Again, commercial and full POD usage. So I can download that and then go right back over to where I was which is my mug mockups here. I can go to my uploads and then try to find that. And so it's right here. I can go ahead, add page and throw that right there. And so now this would be a different mug mockup. I kind of like the colors. It's got the roses in the back. Uh, if I bring it nice and big, it's gonna look something like that. Now. If I was to take my mug by itself, hit Control D, duplicate it so I got another copy, bring it down on here and try to line it up. It's not gonna fully cover this mug. They've got slightly different dimensions, just a little bit, not too bad. So what I would need to do is really crop out their handle so that my mug is gonna look good here. So I can do that. I can hit this photo here, go up to edit photos, and this is really fun. I can go to the um, magic eraser. And on the magic eraser, when I'm on a photo, it is going to kind of erase what I want and fill it in as best as it can with what it thinks the background will be. So that's pretty cool. So if I was to do something like that, We'll see what it comes up with. Sometimes I have to do a couple passes, but I can usually get it to work relatively well. And you can create some really cool mock-ups this way too. So it went ahead and it got rid of that handle. It sort of blurred that background, but it got rid of the handle pretty nicely and I cropped off the top. So now if I was to put it back and I was to, oops, bring it back where it was and take, it keeps doing that, bring it back where it was take my photo and put my photo right over the top and there we go try to get it lined up so that it looks like it's nice boom and so now there's a really cool valentine's day mock-up it's nice and big i've got my valentine stuff in it my roses that all looks nice i could use this one here too and of course i could take this whole thing and make it bigger as well so kind of just what I did with that one. I could make this mug look a lot bigger in the page. I could make this rose a lot bigger in the page, something like that. And there's a Valentine's Day mock-up there. There's a Valentine's Day mock-up there. And so just different ways you can play with it. And so those are good mock-ups if you were gonna go ahead and sell it on something like Etsy, where you can actually, you know, have fun with the mock-ups and make them really nice. And so I know this was a long video. I covered a lot of different things on this. If you have any questions, drop it in the comment section below. I do try to get back to everybody as quickly as I can. Um, I know everybody kind of wants to see then how you'd go ahead and 
put it on Etsy and that becomes a whole nother long video, but you would go ahead and put it on your Etsy shop just how you normally would and then open up your listing. There's a little place under the description of your product where you can click to add personalization and in there you could go ahead and you know put instructions to message you um, you know either email you or message you in Etsy with the photo that they want in there and then when they order it you would just go right back over to your template put their photo in uh, download it and then go back over to Printify where you would just go ahead and you know make the order with their photo so you just alter or you just kind of swap out the um the print file for their photo and boom so that is an easy way that you can start selling custom mugs and of course you can do this with other products as well this exact thing would also work well on a pillow so front and back again you can do this for a pillow you could do it for a tote bag you could do it for just about anything that you can think of and so be as creative as you want valentine's day is just over a month away so if you're going to do it you got to do it pretty quickly for valentine's day but again you can use this technique for any holiday or any event that's coming up in the future um, i hope you guys learned a lot and i hope to see you guys again that's it for today's video if you found that useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos as always, keep growing and stay creative, and we'll see you next time.